Hey guys, uh, my name is Oshara Kiera and welcome to Conversation Square where we have deep and honest conversations about things that matter to us. So today I'm joined by a friend of mine, a former schoolmate. <laughs> it's yeah. called Bruno. He's going to tell us more about himself and what he does. And before we start our conversation today about youth and politics in Kenya, we're going to talk about our responsibilities, um, <coughs> our responsibilities, our rights, uh, you know, our struggles and successes along the way. Especially, of course, we are youth, also we can share our experience. Are we happy where we are at the moment? What can we do to improve? What do we need for us to be better Kenyan youth? And, and so on and so forth. So, Bruno, maybe start by telling us more about yourself. Thank you. So, uh, I think uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Bruno Tiato Marimba. I just finished campus, graduated last year in December. Yeah. I graduated with a degree in Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Public Admin in yeah. yeah, specialization. Then uh, currently I am working uh, working for the Central Organization of Trade Unions in Kenya. Yeah, I won't tell you what I'm doing there, but I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough information. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I didn't even know that. That's good. Um, so what I, start, I want to start, to start this conversation with what does the constitution say uh, about youths? I wish we had the constitution with us right here. I think I should have brought one. But what does it say about our rights and our responsibilities? Yes, we know youths, of course, are also, we, we get the gender of human rights, of course. But what does the constitution say specifically for the youths? And by youth, we mean uh, people who are between 18 years and 34, and 34 years. So 18 to 34, those are the youths. So what does the constitution say? About you. I, I just hope I won't throw you off the balance with how I'm going to answer this one. <laughs> no, it's okay. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm uh, of the view that, uh, I'll come to that, but I'm of the view that uh, constitutions are not written for that purpose. That why a constitution is written, uh, it's simply written for the purpose of getting to know how power is uh, distributed, how someone gets into elective uh, office, and how uh, resources are also distributed. So in terms of how power is distributed is among the legislature, the executive and the judiciary, the checks and the balance. That's, the, that's why we have countries, you know, like the Vatican that have a constitution that is like five, I don't know, ten, six pages. The American yeah. constitution is less than I think it's 4,000 and something words, you know. Ours is like the but you see, this part of Africa where, or the world, where uh, you have to write down everything, everything. for people complicated to... People. Exactly. It's still complicated <laughs> within the same constitution. So, so you know, when it is that big, whatever is inside there doesn't really matter. True. You get. So as long as you don't deal, as long as a constitution doesn't deal with the problem of getting the right people to power because I believe a constitution can deal with that, then whatever it's being said inside there doesn't really matter. But having said that, I think uh, the constitution is not written for the youth, number one. Okay. That's, so, a, good thing or That's a bad thing for sure. Uh, it's neither here nor there because, okay. I mean, looking at it, it's written for Kenyans. It's, it's, it's a constitution for the Kenyan state. Youths are mentioned in pockets, you know, here and there yeah, and where. Yeah, yeah. But it is not for the whole purpose that it is obsessed about, you know, like the way we are being told in the BBI that, you know, they'll bring a youth commission, yeah. which is, you don't need a constitution to do that, you true, know. True. You can do that, you can mainstream matters youth using an executive order. So there are those elements of inside there. So, I mean, if you are, if you are looking at it currently, Kenya has a youth population of over 70%. Is so which which is a huge percentage, percentage, percentage. exactly so the more reason why it mm. should be like it should be a major but i'm not saying the constitution should focus on the youths really but even away from the constitution in terms of how the government is being run in terms of how the communities are being run like the youths are really not a major part of the in so many so many sectors and so many stages and levels in the whole country even away from politics even in other sectors mm. like having in mind the youths we are so many of us uh, so many of us in terms of the numbers, also in terms of people paying taxes, for example. If you're many of us and then between 18 to 30, and maybe from 25 to 30, they're also probably working class people and also the majority. So meaning we do pay taxes. Well, maybe not as much, 
compared to the older people yeah, who, sure. who are earning millions a month and then the young people <laughs> is like a huge gap but we still and, so many of us and you know like uh even just to to, to kind of address what you're trying to say uh, yeah. you see assuming you are a young person like me and you graduate from university you get yeah. your first employment you are likely to get a salary between 25,000 and 70,000. Yeah. That's even a, a lot. I exactly. know people who finish campo and get 10k. 10k. So I'm assuming this one now is, you know, those ones who have the cream, yeah. the like cream. The lucky that's, ones. That's the, the lucky ones. That's the salary they're getting. Now, we have a government, a regime that says uh, the, the tax bracket of people who get between 35,000 yeah. and 70,000 Considering many Kenyans are youth, and yeah. you know the, 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 the statistics show that those who get between 32,000 30, and 80,000 are the majority, the more majority. than 70%. Actually, more than 80% of Kenyans lie in there between. So yeah. when you have tax regimes that come and say, you know, like those yes, ones are being taxed a maximum, a maximum of 30, of 30. you 30. know, so it's, it's a bit ridiculous and you yeah. don't need a constitution to do that, you know, but you need a good government that is are focused on making the entire population better so you need a good constitution uh, you can you can once once you have a good a good constitution and citizens in that country understand their responsibilities and rights so through civic education like we we, ha we are a country that you know most of these leaders are elected by young people yeah. go to those rallies majority of the people who vote exactly yeah yeah if you go to those rallies you'll find young people there do they understand do, does a common Kenyan youth understand what is the power of a vote, you yeah, know, really you know, they are given a right to vote by the constitution. But what, what entails that right for you to vote? Exactly. What is attached to it? Like, I'm mm. voting for this person, what do I need? What the responsibility of this person after I voted for that yeah. person? Um, you and I finished campus a few, maybe one or two, three years ago. And one of the challenges I think most youths get, first of all, getting to campus is a very big, uh, it's a very big challenge. You know, so many people get to like high school and then maybe that's that's it. They would love to continue. So this is also where it comes to because I think being a youth it starts from maybe as a teen, even maybe just as a child. Like you got being guaranteed uh, uh, this child I'm starting school at four years old. How is my education life going to be after you know going to primary school, going to high school and then going to campus? Then when you now become becoming a youth. And most young people, like they get to form four, even form four, high school is very lucky. Mm. You get to form four and then that's it. Like some of them will have to continue. There is also maybe you don't have school, as much as education is free, uh, you don't have school fees to continue. You still pay a bit of it, but then even that bit of it, not so many parents can afford. Some of them have more than two kids, three kids, who need to be fed, who need a house. So education for them is more like a luxury, which it should not be. Like, it's a best, like even the constitution says education is a basic right, but it's just more of on the paper like in the real life is really not so going to campus and it's a lot of struggle we, we both went to UN. Yeah. one of the best but so so according to me <laughs> it's a lot of struggle going to that school like mm. and it, not even just at that particular university like a lot of public universities in kenya actually almost all of them it's just a lot of struggle from lecturers striking every now and then because of pain uh we having members of staff also they strike here and there because of also pay the student also insecurity. We have a university, I think it was J Quart or KU. The students were struggling because of insecurity around J the school. Quart, yeah. yeah, like that should like you as a student, you should be worried about the security of you going to school. Mm. And you know about police brutality when it yeah. comes to student striking. Like imagine you are I remember the first time I went to UN, the first day in New York, when you tear gas was the first week. <laughs> that was in 20, <laughs> 2014. <laughs> so those are those are health students were striking um do a part ahead <laughs> and then I was in class then when the strike started because we we're like just like you went just alone university yeah, yeah. and then the help officers are just also alone <laughs> university so when the strike started we told the lecturer i remember the lecturer it was like an, from school of economics we told him to let us go before like it gets out on the road and mm. then he refused so by the time he was letting us go it was so bad like the police had, had already come mm. on a tear. i remember running i was crying i called my mom <laughs> I called my mom yeah. like my first week in campus no, we will not be able to get the police. And it, it, that should not be the case. Yeah, but I think sure. it happens even in other countries like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We've seen South Africa also students yeah, going yeah. on strike. Yeah. And it hasn't even started right now. Just that way back, campus students used to fight for like human rights, constitutional rights. But nowadays we are fighting, like we are striking for all manner of reasons. Mm -hmm. 
um, which, which should not be like really necessary. And also political political class also using campus students for their own mm-hmm. selfish gains. Mm-hmm. So you finish campus uh, after all that struggle. <laughs> it is a lot of unnecessary struggle. And then first of all, finish with the debt. Hey, mm-hmm. a majority of us women is actually with the, with the debt. Mm-hmm. Then you don't get a job. Then some of these students maybe. Uh, so some of us stay in school, uh, ho- like halls of residence. So after Mamaliza Shila, you need rent, you need food, you're away from school security, like yeah. the safety of being under a system, no, you're on your own. Some of them live way, way far from school. So it's either you remain in the city or you go back to the city or you either go back home. And then when you go back home outside Nairobi, other counties, like if you can't get a job in Nairobi, in other counties, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, even, it's even worse. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much struggling even getting a job. Uh, and then you have a debt to pay. Well, BBA, BBA is saying they're going to increase the, the number of years for you to pay. Mm-hmm. Seven, like, years. seven years. Mm-hmm. I'm like, really don't do that. What we need is jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, I should be guaranteed after high <clears throat> after uni, I get a very good job that helps me to be able to pay back my student club, you know? Mm-hmm. So, when it comes to job uh, to jo- to, um, job opportunities for the youth, do you feel like the government has really failed us? What can we do? Well, what can the government do? What can we do ourselves? Because it seems like the government has given up on us. Mm. They just want to like keep draining us from from the little that's left in us. I, I think the system of education probably the the, the, the structure of everything. Uh, what school should be probably is the problem because you find. Currently, we are introducing these things called TVETs, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the dream of every Kenyan student who's at least serious about life, who is in a high school somewhere, is to join a university. True. And why do they want to join a university? They want to join a university so that they can You're finish guaranteed. and, you know, get a job. Yeah. Then you finish university, you are taken to a company somewhere. Yeah. I, I did a survey last year for, for some a research company called CPS International. And the findings were very shocking. Of course, not so, so shocking, considering it's a known fact. Yeah. And even that's why I'm saying probably it's the system because you you finish campus and you go to uh, a workplace and you have to be retrained. So, for example, you finish journalism in the University of Nairobi yeah. or Moi University. It's then you the old exactly of you you finish. Then you are taken to KTN and. Your yeah. HR is like, you know what, you, you need to undergo a retraining. <laughs> so the, the company has to spend at least another sixty or seventy thousand to make you a better journalist. Yeah. You get. But so look at a country, for example, like uh, Japan. Japan uh, after secondary school, probably CBC is trying to do that, but I don't know if it will succeed. I doubt it will, because after secondary school, uh, probably somewhere in form four, you, you either branch uh into technical stuff you know you get to do technical things and you know once you have skills yeah. you can employ yourself yeah, true. we can't live in a world where we'll be expecting permanently for employment opportunities but what the government of course can do with employment opportunities what other governments have, have done and which is i mean people might hate trump but you know the american first thing is a thing that was there from previous regimes that have been able to propel their yeah. point to prosperity look at japan you know with having their policies like we are we are just exporting you know we don't want to import things that we yeah. can make in yeah, our country even china in, even every china. Deal, in every deal they make outside their country it's when you look at it the most benefit is the chinese yeah chinese exactly are benefiting the most yeah so that's the thing so we, we for example kenya we, we are talking of you know we don't love ourselves and there are so many cotton and there are so many cotton farms that were there in Homa Bay, in Kisumu, that yeah, are dead. Died. Why? Because we are importing Mitumba clothes. Uh, we signed in the Agua Treaty that we'll be importing them. Rwanda, it's a matter of policy. Rwanda said yeah, we are true. not importing. Yeah, and they are trying to manufacture these things. So once you have such kind of policies, you end up creating more employment yeah. for, for the young people. For so there is, a, there is a question of the, the focus of the government do we want to be an export based economy or an import an import based i mean because what we have in kenya right now is we are just an import based economy yeah. that's why if you go to these streets they are all littered by things from china and not, they're not even quality and they're not quality not even quality at least if you're going to import let's import quality exactly quality items because really it's it's very it's very it, it breaks our heart every time 
uh, but I, I wish to disagree with you just a bit about the education system. More of the given the new system, I don't think it's going to work so long as we still, the government is still as corrupt as it is, so long as we continue overtaxing people. Because the system, the education system may be so good, yes, people are still, they are willing to, to, uh, to create uh, employment for themselves, but so long as the business environment is very, very, especially for young people, it's very harsh for young people. For people who want to start, you just, once or two, say two, you want to start, let's say, manufacturing shoes, for example. You have to get license from probably around I get, 10 I, organizations. I that, that, that hasn't, that doesn't have much to do with the educational system, but it has yeah. a lot to do with policy, with, with that's what the government is doing. Yeah. So the, the, the thing, about what I was saying about educational system is, for example, people are looking at the university. Yeah as a source of skill uh, creator for the young people. Which I think but still should, I don't think... No, the university is a place for yeah. knowledge. People go there for knowledge. They don't go there to but get skills. But you need skills. to that child, then what do you do with that knowledge? Like, exactly, for example, you have do to, that, do, to, that to that use that knowledge. knowledge to do other things. Yeah. But if you need skills, you need to go to technical institutions. Yeah. Like I'm saying what Japan does, or what we are trying to do with Tivers. Because there are so many... There's so many people, like, if you imagine, for example, if you had a, a government that is encouraging institutions to do with music, you know, after yeah. high school, you're yeah. like, yeah. there are so many people who are bright, yeah. but because they know, they know even with being brilliant and being good musicians, you still need a degree. Yeah, you to, still struggle. To, so you, you to have to go beats. to your uh, university to do what? Yeah. You go yeah. to university, but the entire time you spend singing. Yeah. So what is think, the whole I think, essence I think of it? For me, I should look at it from all angles. You know, from the TVEX, from education system, from art schools, uh, from sports, for example. I, I don't know if it's KU or another uni teaches teaches football, if I'm not wrong. Sports science in KU. Sports science in KU, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think, first of all, you improve the existing courses, for example. Some of them, they're still teaching. Like, I, know, I know people who went to, who studied engineering, and they will tell you, been using the same machines from, 1970s. from 1970s. Yeah. Then, you, that, then that person stayed in school for like five years. Mm -hmm. And then at Okeinje gets a job, but then they're like, this, the system has changed like five years ago. Yeah. You have to like restart again. So you ask a question, then why did they have to go to school for all those years and struggle that much? If for me coming to the job market, I have to start from mm -hmm. scratch. Or I'll go to uni and then come back and do a job that they've done comfortable, like Hawking, for example. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying Hawking is bad, or you, you had guys it's who are like... It's not a, a, it's a, a desired job. It's, it's not a desired job. You can do better. Yeah. You've had of cases people with degrees who are doing Django, they are conductors. So the question is, why do I have to go through all those years in school and then come do a job which, which I could have done straight mm -hmm. from high school? I think mm -hmm. that's where the, the bitterness and the heart is coming from for the most young people. Like if I was if I knew I wouldn't get a job after going to school after going to campus, I would have just uh, even even with my A or my B. That's the other thing. So you pass your exam, do so well, do medical school, and then you, you get a job. Then every now and then you're on the road striking for for better pay and better working exactly. conditions. You do engineer, you do you do engineering, and then what you do, you probably start from you know from the bottom at the bottom. Whereas you're working with people who didn't, who don't have as much skills as you mm -hmm. have. So mm -hmm. I think that's where the heart. I think that's where the problem is. Do I really need to go to school to then after it do something that they've done without ha not having gone to school, and then I still have to pay a student loan for for me going to school for a cause that is not even helping me. Mm. So I think with education, I think as much as it's good we will change the, uh, the education system, but still more has to be done. We still have to make business environment very really favorable for young people. Yeah, I, I agree. You, you I ask agree. a question, why is it that we have a lot of companies who are doing very much well in Kenya, they are foreign owned. You know, they are exposed to like certain opportunities. They have the money to maybe bribe, for example. It's also a very corrupt country. Mm. Like the more money you have, the more you're able to buy some of these services, which should be free. Mm. Or the easy it is for you to get a certificate from, let's say, Kevs, for example. Mm. I don't know, certificate from Neema to build uh, whatever building. But for yeah. young people, not even young people, even the rest, you know, older people from middle class going, 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 uh, going down, they don't have that money. To pay for all those certificates, mm. to bribe your way to get all those certificates. So, if you don't improve, uh, uh, we don't better the business environment in Kenya. The education system will still be useless. True. Those people after going through that fancy education system, they will still join us the eight four four, eight four four, to hustle like everyone else. Because I don't think eight four four is, because we did eight four four. I think I can run a business if I was in a 
a better environment, for example. I think I can do better. I think I have friends who are into art. I'm sure if they if they had if they had gone to an art school, for example, they will do an amazing job either mm. singing or writing. But then those opportunities were not there. So as much as we're saying let's let's improve on the Tibet, we also need to encourage people. Like the I, government I, should I think somehow more. somehow yeah. that has been addressed by the new education system that yeah. is being put into place. But so we have to see if we are yet happen. to see because see, you know yeah. uh, so we <laughs> probably have to be a bit patient. But what yeah. you are saying is true yeah. because You'll assume a ministry, you know, like, it's very funny how the useless of ministers in this country are taken to ministries like sports. Yeah. So that's a very integ integral ministry. Yeah. You don't take a non-performer, someone who's not, the president that, that doesn't shows, want to serve. I know. That's an you don't show, yeah, you yeah. don't show. Because when you think, remember that time, <laughs> this breaks my heart. Like we are so good with sport. Like that's that's one of the things where the government should be like, this is like a talent. Exactly. Like this is talent for Kenyans. You know, like you don't even need any learning at you to go to school to learn how to to run and win mm. marathons. Like like this is talent. God given it's talent yeah. which other countries don't even have, mm. and they are willing to pay our own people yeah. to, to like uh, compete for them so much money. Like the government should just be like, you know what, yeah. you you want to learn? Here is a training ground. Like because mm. that that's all those people need. Why care like a stadium or whatever they require, like a training track, which you just invest in one, like it's, a, it's, it's like a one time thing, and then that's it. And then that one track will like promote so many other people, like to compete and make money out of it. But the government doesn't care. So long as we're yeah. benefiting them, they don't care. Remember that time where we had, I don't remember MCS from which part, but from the part, the region where we have uh, people, I think the Bomet or something from Metro. Mm. And then they went to this foreign country in Europe to benchmark. Uh, something to do with running and sports and marathons. I'm like, first of all, <laughs> I'm like, it's those people who should be coming here yeah, yeah. to benchmark and find out why are Kenyans so good when it comes to running, not us going to those countries. Remember the other time when we had uh, MPs and uh, MCS going for World Cup, watching mm -hmm. and I'm like, first of all, that money Russia. should be should be building stadiums, you know, promoting sport activities in school. Because what happens, you know, like how it is in the US where. When, when, when they when they realize this, a young someone in high school is very talented in sports, mm. they are linked to a particular university. Like they yeah. follow up yeah. for that person. Yes, you're gonna go to college, but mm. you go to a college where it's so good with sports that you can still do good. Yeah. For us, they really don't care. They don't care because some of these talents, like they are picked from a very young age. But as so long as you don't develop them mm. until to a mm. level where they can turn it to a career yeah. or maybe a passion that they can do as a side hustle or something, it's really not going to. I mean, to, look at Marie and the guy. Earns a lot of money, you know, yeah. just from playing football. So there, there is, there is uh, th that question of investing in, I mean, the government shifting yeah. its mindset on what it should concentrate on. So policies, for example, yeah. to do with the Ministry of Sport, which I believe should be taken uh, into serious consideration. Some I mean, of the policies are there. We just don't have willing people to. Yeah. To work on them, or like, I don't think the problem with policies. I, I actually feel like. I am of the idea that we have very good policies, as, as, like compared to other countries, really, African countries, even our neighbors. I don't want to mention Tanzania, Burundi, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are very, uh, they are even worse, you know, Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those ones are like at the bottom. Mm. I think for us, I think even our constitution is like pretty good. That's why I'm, I, I'm against and it. You know, it I, doesn't need to be changed. Like, we just need mm. implementation and few changes. First of all, we need to implement it fast. You know, we implement to a point where we're like, you know what, we've done 70% implementation of this constitution. And we feel like we need to now change it to cater for the needs that were not catered for in the existing constitution. But as as for now, I feel like we really, this changing that's being BBI proposing and whatnot, they're just for a few people from their own selfish states. I feel like there's still much to be done. Even when it comes to policies and ministries, <laughs> I, know, I know you're for, for BBI, mm. and, and ministries, for example, they're still, they still, uh, cause, like for example, I'm sure Ministry of Sports and, mm. and whatever, mm. they are all for, let's say, for example, building stadiums. I think of that thing, building a stadium in every county. Uh, yeah, we are yet to see. To yeah, we are yet yeah. to see. Like you know, for education yeah. ministry, for example, one of the challenges we have, I think Magoha is addressing this. Girls, <clears throat> when you know this have been a problem for so many years. They mm. have girls who stay out of school because they don't have sanitary supplies. And I think Uhuru a few years ago did approve such um a law that through Ministry of Education we're gonna have guys being provided for sanitary supplies. Mm. And I'm like, this is for a country where we are right now, to be comparing ourselves and our neighbors. Like those are things that should have already even been done 
since a long time ago. I think some schools used to do. Mm. So this is where we have in a quality of distribution of resources. Okay. So schools in Nairobi, around Nairobi, get some of these privileges, not privileges, but some, some of these resources. And then if you get schools from, let's say, in Mandera, you know, far away from the city, which is very unfair. Because mm. if I, the same students who do exams under trees, yeah. and then those ones who do in fancy schools at State House, they still do the same exam. And you expect the same people to, to grade them the same, you expect them to go to the same universities and compete mm. equally. So yeah. it's, I think it starts from, there's also that distribution of resources. So it's, the policies, I think we have the policies. So the problem is how implemented these policies. And from every now and then, even when you change regimes, even when you have a new minister coming in or a new cabinet, they still continue with the same stealing and not doing their job as well. Like, you know, like education system, I, all, I, all yeah, is being done. That's, that's, that's a bit true. And uh, I don't know if you realize this. I'm, I'm very critical uh, yeah. on so many things. And uh, tend to spend time talking to young people, you know, very say, ambitious. Say, say fellow young people. Fellow young don't people. speak like, like you're like 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> say yeah, fellow young Man people. Man also. <laughs> <laughs> so I spend yeah. time speaking to many and uh, it's very depressing, yeah. you know. There's a comedian in Kenya who's called Katuna. Oh, I love Katuna! To depressions. <laughs> To the risk, to the risk, exactly. So the, the way she says, you can get to depression. Talking to a young person in Kenya, yeah. who thinks in his mind he's so convinced that Kenya is one of the worst countries in the world. In the world. Why? And and that's the position many young people have in their it's country, true. which is not true. Yeah. Because if you were, I mean, you are just talking and yeah. mentioning students, maybe young people in Uganda. Yeah. Who are said to be the le- no Tanzania? They are said to be very lazy. In Uganda, the the crime rate is so high. Look at South Africa, yeah. Joburg. You can't walk. I mean, yeah. the crime rate is yeah. very high in Joburg. Yeah. In yeah. I, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, from Zimbabwe called Innocent. Just landed in the country. Then I think he took a trip to Tigoni. Yeah. Then after that, we, we we had a time to just have a chat, and he was telling me how. Yeah. He was so amazed. Yeah, I'm also shocked. Yeah. Because even on Twitter sometimes, actually recently, I think there was either a Nigerian or something uh, that came and then they took a picture at our um, Siokima West GR station. Exactly. And then someone was saying, like, so you have then other African countries, uh, people from other African countries were like, oh, we love to move to Nairobi, to Kenya, it's such a beautiful place. They yeah, beautiful the, the infrastructure. And then for us, we are like, which country? So we, we give exactly. A chance of exactly. Kenyans you think to that, but anyone coming from outside do yeah. you know for example yeah. for example nigeria doesn't experience not any day 24 hours of electricity yeah nigerians are here you know? traffic you say traffic, traffic out. exactly <laughs> look at many countries our neighbors you they can't still, compare they, they export oil and i think they still mm. oil is very expensive in the country well i think nigeria nigeria they don't want to like throw shade you know <laughs> but nigerians apart from their art which i don't understand why their art industry has been so good for so many years like no um it's called nollywood Hollywood. nollywood produces it's number two in the world that produces the most movies in the world like mm. number two after Bollywood. like they're even ahead of Bollywood, the u.s one mm. like like their music their music in like their music industry, their acting, their fashion. I think they're very, I think they love their own a lot. You hear you go to UK and then they're all calling themselves, you know, the Queens, the Nigerian accent. I'm even told when you go abroad, a lot of white people think Nigerians are a representation of the whole Africa. <laughs> and I'm like, no, those are West Africans. We are Kenyans and you're not like that. You know, I don't understand how they can be so good in the art industry. I don't know what they did. I think probably Kenyan also need to study what Nigerians did or what they are doing in the art sector for us to implement or at least to borrow some few goods. Like they can't be that good. Mm. They can't be that good for no reason. So I don't understand how the art sector... No, they the are sector, probably good the way we also run. So. I don't know. Because <laughs> imagine like our movie industry is not as good. Like, we don't have yeah, as much. Like we don't support it as much. I think we have the talent, but we don't support it as much. Mm. So I don't understand why the Nigerians can be so good in the art sector. And then everything else, it's just <laughs> horrendous. Mm. <laughs> I don't really understand. But I think every African country maybe it has its own ups yeah. and downs. True. So so when these other Africans uh, compare us and be like, oh, Kenya, you, do people have a good time? You have freedom of speech. You can go on Twitter and insult your president. Well, Uganda, Tanzania, those ones can. Mm. <laughs> those ones can. We still have a bit of freedom of speech. But then yeah. that freedom of speech, which of course, young people who are online, how is it really helping us? 
the other day the government reduced DS, uh, digital service tax, for mm. example. We have a lot, of, a lot of young people who are deciding, well, you know, this everything we are mm. Let me start blogging, creating content, yeah. uh, influencing, and they've been doing pretty well. And you know, both young women and men, and they've been doing such an amazing job mm. promoting brands. We've even seen even big brands now shifting their marketing strategy from, you know, TV and radio to young influencers. And yeah. the government said, that, uh, <laughs> not going to happen. We are going to tax They're you. Looking for any penny, any, any penny. penny. I love it. Yeah. You know, and this and, the, and and then and then it's more probably dedicated. They like it's more like an attack on young people. There is also uh, last year, but when they introduced the other, what do you call the other tax they introduced for young for people selling goods online also. So there is mm. the DSC is for the service, and then there's the other one for for yeah. goods. So if you have a business, you're selling Tumba clothes online on Instagram. The government is like, ah, uh, you may not have a physical shop, but you're still selling. We need you to give us part of that money you know so that's like it comes back to the business environment yeah. of the people i don't think as it for four system or even the older generation don't think actually they can't create jobs just that they can't create jobs then the environment is not conducive for them that's why foreigners are able to come in with all their dollars and whatnot yeah. and come and start businesses and then kill our young businesses mm. that for, that were being done by young people True. and maybe human, women at the same time which are also a very part of the population yeah so yeah, policies is not the problem. We have some of the policies. We have very good policies. The problem is implementation. Then we have bad policies which are very selfish, which are meant to enrich the few, and they don't care about the rest. So it's a man eats population. <laughs> I would really say. Mm. And I want us to talk about um, youth participation in politics, like youth political participation. Mm. Like youth, first of all, we don't have as much. <clears throat> we don't have as. Like can't in mind the big population is youth. The, that doesn't reflect when it comes to to representation. representation either from political uh, from the political uh, sector to the business sector like how many see how many young ceos do we have not a, maybe there's also the aspect of experience but then at least we need someone like a young person is, who is being groomed to be a ceo in the next year which the, is the, not the as biggest meaning. challenge you first uh, yeah. with the youth representation is uh, the few that have been entrusted yeah they are, they're not doing a good job they are doing badly i know they are doing well, badly. politics so. exactly so uh, yeah. and those ones are the ones that you get to see yeah and then everyone else after them will be judged exactly in their just like yeah yeah yeah, doing, yeah. So. like oh you want us to vote for young people remember yeah. abcd ABC you voted for them last exactly. time and they joined the stealing team yeah. so yeah that's a, that's a really good. the same thing with the women also so we voted for a few women at the last election <laughs> they didn't do a good job yeah so the problem is which is a very bad it's bad on us as the voters mm. the next the next time you want to vote for a woman you want to vote for a young person you're like ah we voted for abcd they didn't do a good job so we won't vote for them again but i'm like we keep giving all the men who have not shown any progress who have not done any work so many chances there is, country there is, there is these need, young people there is need to chances. there is need to do a lot of civic education true true uh with that probably we'll have a crop of young leaders yeah uh who young kenyans will understand what a leader is and probably they'll entrust one true. of theirs yeah to be there uh you know i'm yet to see a young leader who's very sober in this country Probably the a bit so bad like in a Sakaja ish, mm. to like Lonzo ish. Sakaja is not, are they young? Well, yeah, they're young. They are young <laughs> in terms of. But they're not youths. Yeah, exactly. But then the if, question if is, you are comparing have, them. Yeah, so the question is, do they have mentees that they're, me, they're, they're mentoring or they're grooming to follow their steps? So, so they want to be young forever. That's the Very soon they will join the older that's generation. That's the problem. So that's the other problem. Yeah. So do we have, so these people who are the minority, for example, that we try to bring up and have them as, uh, you know, representing other minority groups, uh, either maybe from uh, specific ethical communities, mm -hmm. Uh, women, uh, young people, and maybe other other minorities. But probably to their to their defense, you know that's not their role to do. That's the role of mentoring uh, mentoring young people into political leadership. Yeah. Uh, solemnly lies with the political parties. You know that's their basic duty. Sakaja and the rest can be employing young people to work. That's what I'm thinking because they were also mentored too. They were also given a chance. But exactly. why are they not giving other young people a yeah. chance? As much as it's us voting, mm. you can't tell me to vote for a youth. But then if there's no youth in the ballot, on the ballot paper, then how am I going to vote for, for a youth? So I believe there is need for not considering what I've yeah. said with the current crop of leaders that we have, yeah. there is need for voting for the right people. Don't yes. vote for a young person. Who right people regardless of their gender exactly. or their age. Exactly. Okay. So don't or vote. Their tribe. Yeah. 
So as long as you vote for the right people, who will implement the policies that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. So we'll have a group of young people at some point that yeah. will be mentored by these right yeah. people. So we'll as long as they're doing whoever is doing the job is doing a good job, exactly. so it will benefit the young people. There is no need of actually uh, empowering young people, empowering their fellow young yeah. person who's a novice, who's clueless, doesn't know what they're supposed to be doing, yeah. no extortionists, because most of them who are in yeah. parliament, yeah. they're just extortionists, they're there to eat money, yeah. to do what, like being bribed 10,000 to... Doing. Exactly, so they're there's no difference. As, as the other ones were. Yeah. So they also give in terms of leadership, this is something that should be picked up from my young age. Because not now you don't tell me, oh, Bruno, you should buy for a particular position. You know, like randomly. Or we keep asking, why are you not young people not buying for this position? But I think these are things that should have been uh, encouraged from like a young age. And also, who are the leaders we grew up seeing? Some of these people want to be presidents because our MC, because I know my MC drives a big car. Yeah. But, but that car is bought by probably money from criminal activities mm -hmm. or from Proceeds of corruption. Proceeds of corruption. Yeah. So also we don't have good role models that we grew up, we grew up seeing. Yeah. The people who are doing so well in the political system, they are the dads. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if I want such a life, that's, that's the other thing. So if I want such a life, because of course everyone advises a comfortable life. So if I want a comfortable life, I have to do what they are doing. And what they are doing is all the right thing. Yeah, true. So we need, first of all, we need a few good leaders. And I think that's act. why that, yeah. that speaks to the same, same thing I'm yeah. talking about, civic education. True. From if a we young really age. invest in that as a country, probably, I'm just saying, yeah. we'll, we'll probably change the kind of leaders. Because, for example, Sonko was impeached the other day. But do you know, the, the, the hard fact is, yeah. if elections were to be held today we'll in still Nairobi, be voted for. and he is on the ballot, probably he'll even get more votes. More votes. Remember even Babaya wanted to vote. Exactly. And I'm like, how? Like even like I think even for him having the confidence to even want to vote is because he knows people will still the audacity. <laughs> like even have to keep having the audacity to want to vote. I was like, boss, you shouldn't even be thinking about voting. Yeah. But he did. And if he wasn't stopped by uh, the ACC, the ACC. Yes. if he wasn't stopped and, and you had the Nairobi mm. election, he yeah. would have voted and people would have voted. Would have been voted for. Because he knows. Yeah. He knows who Kenyans are, he knows do, they don't care about his criminal records, they don't care that he didn't do a good job, you know the Kenyans, he's been with them for so many years, they, they don't really care, or they're like, oh, we know, uh, but, uh, exactly. <laughs> we know, or the mentality of, so long as you to like, you'd rather have your own dog mm. than have a, an angel for, who is not, yeah, who absolutely. doesn't come from, from the community. Mm. So I think we definitely need more, more yeah, young people more, yeah, exactly. for this position. But yeah. fairly, I love this lady, she's called um, Simantoi. She had went for senator in Nairobi in the last I, election. I remember her. She's yeah. really nice. I like. I love her. She didn't win, of <laughs> course. But like her having the the courage to buy, like for me that was a win for her. And right now she's having a YouTube channel. If I'm not wrong, okay. she's educating people on politics. That's nice. That's I think she was nice. doing. I haven't watched it, but I know she does. I should probably just sit down and watch several of them at mm. one go. Which is I think is a very good thing. Yeah, I think even what we are doing right now, you know, talking about politics. Yeah. But then there's also this idea of yeah, Kenyan youths. Uh, don't be involved with politics. I'm like, the fact that you work and you pay taxes every single day, that's not for you to be very actively when it comes to politics, not just voting, but every single day asking questions, you know, knowing who is saying what and what are they not saying, finding mm -hmm. out what are they doing with our budget, how much debt do we have at the moment, you know, this Barabara in the Jango Vizuri, who is, who is your MCA, what are they doing? You know, our president had gone, I don't know, to France. What is he going there to do? Is he getting more loans? Yeah. Or is he, you know, signing deals that will make us keep, like, like deals that are not of any good to us? Like, you have no reason not to be involved politically. And to be involved politically doesn't have to be you buying. It's, yeah, it's just this every single day. And if you have a chance to educate yourself first, you need to educate yourself. Because you can't keep depending on this government to do civil education. For us, having born in a generation where we have technology, like, and, and still use WhatsApp <laughs> compared to our neighbors who don't have social media. You can still go on Twitter and read, yeah. you can watch TV, you know, freely, and even from our mobile phones and listen to some of these analysts. <clears throat> some of them are biased, but it's good to listen and at least gauge, yeah. you know, gauge and also maybe improve your understanding. Mm -hmm. Listen to different, like, don't just be stuck with one person, like, yeah. educate yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you have a chance, well, every time you can, we shall go, uh, you know, edu carry a newspaper. Um, talk to people, you know, in your format or you know, you can also go for like, <laughs> for people who go for like long distance, you know, have a conversation about sure. politics. At least we, we 
get comfortable talking about politics yeah. so that when it comes to election, which is of course very ethical, when someone tells you, you know something about this community, you're like, uh, no, like you don't believe it because you've had this political yeah, conversation. Because sure. we don't have to wait until the election, the election year for us to talk about politics. I think we should be talking about politics every yeah, single day. Yeah. We get used to that conversation, we get used to asking the hard questions, we get comfortable with them, and then yeah. we start demanding what, like, what is key to us, mm. and we start being responsible at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, as we finish, what do you think? Is the future we have people going ahead? What is our future? <laughs> what is our future? Should we just give up and like, not okay. really <laughs> giving up has never been the option? Yeah. Uh, I think we will conquer at some yeah. point. But it's hard. But uh, yeah. there is need to do a lot of civic education, as I've said, a yeah. lot of talk on these things, as you are saying. Yeah. And I think uh, with that, probably we will have a better future. You know, uh, keeping your government into account. You know, Every making time. them. Don't don't just let a politician come and tell you, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll well, bring A B C D. That place where the MP you know. and the other four come I think we should do that. Yeah, and, and even MCA even counties, even two counties, for example, where yeah. young people really acted nicely, Makweni yeah. and Nandi County, they sent home all MCS. Yeah, I think they next removed, election. You know, because all they are not BDI performing, <laughs> they are just all about politics. Yeah. So there is a future where, as long as young people know their rights, they know yeah. what a powerful vote is. Yeah. I know we'll what I deserve. We will have a yeah, better game. I, I think that's where we should start. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you so much. I think we thank talked you. a lot as young people. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming Thanks and for sharing your views and amazing opinions. Thank you. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure you also, you did say that you also are a columnist. Oh, yeah, I write. <laughs> Thank you for reminding no, our dear yeah, viewers. He's trying to be modest. <laughs> <laughs> I write occasionally for Kenyan newspapers, mostly for the nation of late, po 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 on, politics, on politics and yeah. other issues of interest, yeah. and sometimes for the Star Line. Yesterday I had an article for the Star Line. Okay, yeah. so see, I think you also, we can, like, there is more to be done. Like, what you're doing also, sharing your political views, yeah. uh, and, and you also do for your concerns, sharing your political experience. Because then you also, I was making a documentary where you're saying, we made politics to look like, and also economics to look like it's something meant for a highly educated people. Like, if you're not if you're not a political scientist, then you can't understand basic mm. politics. But really, some of the classes we did, they're like, very, very basic. Very true. Very basic, anyone can understand. Yeah. So you sharing your skills that we learn with good, ordinary people, then, you can't all be an expert in everything. Like Very you can't be political science yeah. and then know everything about medicine, mm. know everything about psychology and yeah. about food. Mm. So it's also people from different sectors, yeah. also young people sharing. Which we have social media, like sharing. Mm. What are like for example, me from an accounting or finance side and investment. Me sharing. You know what does what what policies are there? What opportunities are there for yeah. investing? Yeah. What opportunities are there? The government, like we have youth. Um, uh, we have certain organization meant for uh, for creating. Um, funding youth projects for example yeah. which the government doesn't say much about but if i'm aware of them i should you know share that information but then if you have a business mm. and you're looking for funds in this government organization that does that true from a political science side you also educate people on the same like yeah. there's so much you can share among young people to help ourselves because the government is not going to help us like if you continue to for the government we all die poor <laughs> and miserable so we help ourselves also mm. and then regardless of our differences and whatnot we just come together for the benefit of all of us and also for, for, benef for the benefit of our kids and also the next generations to come at mm -hmm. least we didn't go fighting you know like our our forefathers who yeah. went fighting for independence and all that so what what what, what are we saying what are we going to tell the, the next generation at what do we do to mm -hmm. better our lives sure. so so there is a lot that we can do we don't sure. have to just rely on this on this failing government and it's not just this government even previous governments have failed us mm. <laughs> and probably even the next one will probably yeah. even fail us more so if you keep depending on the government we'll never go anywhere and really need to go to go forward in our life so thank you so much um so thank you so much for watching and listening uh, and, and it was a long conversation but i'm, I'm sure it was like a big short conversation also share um, you know your views about youth and politics not even just politics but general uh your experience of the youth has it been very good what what do you think is going to help us please join the conversation as we talk about young people and the things that um the things that affect us on a daily basis so thank you so much